Hey guys, my name is Peter from Vugo TV, and today we're going to show you how to assemble a gaming system. Now, obviously, each computer system will vary in parts, but at the core of our video, we're going to show you the basics. Starting with our NVIDIA GTX 570 video card, Asus Maximus 4 motherboard, Intel Core i7 processor, 800 watts of power supply, 16 gigs of RAM, pulled by an easy to install water cooling system, and lastly, a one terabyte hard drive by Western Digital. These are all going to be housed under the Cooler Master HAF 932 case. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to start with the power supply. Before we put it in, I just want to make a note about cases. Some will only have a top bracket, some will have a bottom, and some will have both. But in our instance, we're going to pop it in the bottom bracket because it'll provide for better airflow and easier cable management. So, we're going to pop it in, stand facing down. Once you popped it in, align the holes of the power supply with the case and then pop the screws in. Simple as that. After installing your CPU, you want to install your CPU cooler. Now, our CPU came with a stock cooler, such as this one, but if you want something more adequate, more efficient, and more quiet, you want to opt for a third-party cooler, such as this one. We skip the installation because each CPU cooler will have its own method of installation, and you must refer to the instructions when you get one. Next up is our memory. Now, they come in different kits. Single channel, dual channel, tri-channel, or quad channel, which is what we what we're working with today. Now let's say you're using a dual channel setup. You want to make sure the RAM corresponds to the color on the RAM slots in your motherboard, such as red with red or black with black. The colors on motherboards will vary, but you get the point. Now another thing to make note of is to make sure your motherboard supports the RAM that you're gonna buy. DDR3 will not mix with DDR2. So if your motherboard only supports DDR3, make sure you get a DDR3 set. Now, you to make sure this short side goes into the short side of the slot. Put it in one end. And make sure it snaps in. Next up is our optical drive. Yeah. In order to do this, you have to pop open the front bay. Each case will have its own mechanism. But this one is pretty simple. Pop open the side, take it out, and slide it in. Now each case will have its own locking mechanism. So either have to screw it manually on the sides, but in this one, you just push the button and it's locked in. Next up are our hard drives. Uh, each case will have its own hard drive bay, but in this case, you have these brackets that you could fit your hard drive in, just like we have over here. Pop it in, and then just slide them in. There's one. There's one. And that's it. Last but not least, we have the video card, the heart of any gaming system. Now two things to make note of before you buy it. Make sure it fits in your case and that your power supply can power your components. I'm going to pop this in into the PCI Express slot. Put down the latches. Now, not all cases will have latches, so you have to screw it in manually. But lucky latches. Okay. After plugging in your components into your motherboard, you want to power them with the cables. Each motherboard will vary in pin size. They'll either have a 20 pin or 24 pin connector or an 8 pin 
are a four pin connector. These power connectors su supply the motherboard with power. Make sure they're in. Like that. <clears throat> All right, guys, that was it. We made a mess, but I hope you guys learned from our video. If you want a list of our parts that we used, check out the description below. But please subscribe to our videos and check out our blog. But until then, see you guys next time.